Is that largely true, that there are no easy oil left in Africa? Well, given the things happening around the Gulf of Mexico, Mexico we're seeing right now, and the repercussions this has around the world, that, let's say uh, we're seeing Norway, for example, also putting a ban on some of their licenses for offshore drilling. We're seeing UK increasing its number of inspections of the drilling sites much more. We're seeing Brazil, although continuing with their, their pre-sol drilling, uh, also increasing the monitoring procedures. So there's a lot of repercussions happening uh, around the world with regard and as a consequence out of the, uh, out of the oil spill in the, in the Gulf of Mexico. And this also is another set, I think, of indications telling us that the e times of easy oil and cheap oil are really over right now. And speaking about that, in Africa, a lot of governments in Africa who've got the oil they're getting a lot, lot tougher about their take from the oil that's taken out of their country. How do you think that's going? Well, I, I think we will see also some repercussions out of this in Africa, happening in Africa. They also will look more and more on onto the, the processes, how the oil is developed and, and being explored in their countries. But we also see that Africa has some prospects. When you look at the new finds in Uganda, you're seeing that Africa really is a country which still open for surprises when you look at crude and how it is developing in this continent. I mean, an oil man said to me recently, one thing they like about Africa is that it hasn't been touched for so many years right. in so many places that there's so much oil there. I mean, Ulrich, I mean, how do you see oil being part of Africa's future? This well, you know, I think that uh, if we look at the demand coming out of the United States, the biggest oil consumer, uh, they would like to diversify the, the, the supply of oil out of the Middle East because of the political instability. Now, hopefully, we have political stability all the, in the Niger Delta in coming years. So I think that, yes, there is a potential for a stronger demand coming to South Africa. And if we can provide the quality, and I think that we have good quality oil, especially on the West Coast, then, yeah, there's a bright future. Now, just looking a bit further ahead, in the, oh, there's going to be pressure, you say, for Africa and the world to reduce its carbon footprint. Yeah. Um, how do you think this is going to impact on the energy and oil industry? Well, given what we're expecting as growth uh, scenarios for the energy sector, let's see primary energy growing until 2030 by almost 40 percent and electricity demand growing by even 74 percent in the same time frame, this shows us, and, and also then, given the fact that most of this energy is still produced and electricity is still produced in coal-rich uh, countries like China and, and India, these two countries really, uh, really determining and dominating in the, our future uh, energy mix in the world. And they also very much uh, determining our problems with regard to, uh, to CO2 we're having in the world. However, we need to make sure that everybody in the world is taking care of this global problem. It's not just a regional problem rather than a global one, and it can only be solved in global action. How seriously or otherwise do you think governments in Africa are taking the spending on new renewable energy for the future? Well, we're seeing that Africa, especially also South Africa, is starting to really pick up looking into and even investing already yeah, some amounts of money into renewable energy. They're looking into wind, they're looking into solar, and you're seeing the first things coming through in Africa, which I think is a very good prospect going forward. We're also seeing, when you look for it, it from the European perspective, that Europe is trying also to, in, in combination with Africa, especially Northern Africa, and a project like Desertec, trying to use all what is available, for example, in, in solar radiation in the, uh, in the desert areas in Africa to use this for the local energy supply, but may also use it partly for European energy supply in the future. Looking to the future now, I mean, what do you think is the greatest problem and hurdle facing Africa in the energy future? Well, the energy future for Africa is certainly depending 
on having the right funding available to make the necessary investments. There are huge investments necessary in all sectors of energy in the African, uh, in the African continent. And the African problem here is to find timely the right finance for this type of investments which needs to be made. And this relates to traditional energy as well as to renewable energy. 